Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I am Passionate Kelsey. Today we are going to continue with our beginner knitting series. So in the first and second video, I taught you guys how to do the knit stitch and the purl stitch. In this video, we are going to combine those and we are going to do some knit ribbing. So first of all, I just wanna show you, I have some clover bamboo needles. These are 6.5 millimeters. And I have some yarn here that goes with my needle size. Now, this is just showing you how to do the rib stitch. You don't need to have a specific size of needle or a specific size of yarn. I would just recommend that your yarn and your needles match each other size-wise. But once you have everything you need, which is your knitting needles and your yarn and probably some scissors, we can go ahead and get started. The first thing we are going to want to do is cast on to our needles. I'm going to be using a long tail cast on method, so I'm just going to pull out a long end on my yarn. I don't want to cast on too many stitches, so I'm not going to make a very long tail. And then at this point, I'll make a slip knot in my yarn. After you have your slip knot, you can take one of your needles and put it through there. Tighten your knot up a little bit. I'll quickly run through the long tail cast on, although I did do a detailed explanation in my first how to knit video. So I'm going to uh, take my fingers, put them like this, go through the V in my yarn, gather everything else with the rest of my hand. I'm gonna turn it to where it's facing up and then I will grab the outside yarn on my thumb, grab the inside yarn on my pointer finger, and I'll pull it through this hole that I just created on my thumb. So now we have another loop on our needle. To tighten it up, all we have to do is drop the loop on our thumb, and then to tighten this up, we're going to grab this yarn. See how it's tightening it up there? Just pull it all the way. And doing that also resets your hand so you can do it again. So outside yarn on your thumb, inside yarn on your pointer finger. Pull it through the hole on your thumb, drop your thumb pick it up again, and that also tightens down your loop. So I'm just gonna cast on probably around 15 stitches for this example. Okay, I actually did 16. So here we are with all of the loops on our knitting needle. Next, what I wanna do is I want to transfer this needle into my left hand, because anytime we are starting to knit, all of your work should be on the left side. And then as we work, it will move to our right needle, which should be in your right hand. And currently it should be empty. I knit in the continental style, so my yarn is going to be in my left hand. Leave the tail to the side and you're gonna pick up the long piece of yarn that should be still connected to your yarn ball. I like to just put it around my pointer finger like that and sometimes over my pinky as well. Once you are set up and ready to start knitting, we are going to start the process of doing the ribbing. I'm gonna start with one by one ribbing. And whenever you're doing one by one ribbing, the one by one means that we are going to be doing one stitch of knitting and one stitch of purls. And then you just go back and forth between those two stitches. So I'm going to be starting with a knit stitch. So I will take my empty needle in my right hand. I will put it through my front loop 
starting on the left side, going through the bottom and coming out on the right side. Now I'm going to take my yarn, that's my left hand, and I will wrap it around my back needle like this clockwise. And then to do a knit stitch, I will grab that yarn with my back needle and pull it through our loop that we just went through. And now I will transfer that loop off of my left needle because we already worked it. Okay, so if you see here, we have our first knit stitch. Now the next stitch is going to be a purl stitch, so the only thing that you need to do is to move your yarn to the front. Normally whenever you're working knit stitches, the yarn is in the back of your work. Whenever you're doing a purl, it needs to be in the front of your work. So in between stitches, just make sure you switch over your yarn. Now we're gonna do our first purl stitch. So we're gonna go into our next loop on the left hand needle. We're gonna go from the right side to the left side. And then we're going to take our yarn in our left hand. We're going to wrap it around our front needle. We're gonna to touch the front of the needle first and then the back of the needle. And once that is wrapped around, we're gonna take the loop that we just wrapped. We're gonna pull it through the loop that we went through like this. Once you have that stitch worked, it's now on your right needle, so you can take it off of your left needle. There you go, and you have your purl stitch right there. So now we're just gonna alternate back and forth between a knit stitch and a purl stitch. We just did a purl, so our next stitch is going to be knit. So in order to transition, we just need to move our working yarn from the front to the back. There you go. We're gonna do the same thing that we did on the first stitch. We are going to knit. So go through your first loop on your left hand needle. We're gonna go from left to right through the loop. Your needle should be coming out the back. You're gonna wrap your yarn around it. And then you're going to pull it through. If you can see, I like to use my finger as a guide so that my yarn does not slip off the end of the knitting needles. I usually just put my finger right here while I'm pulling it through the loop so that it doesn't slip off the end. Now that I've worked that stitch, I'll take it off my left needle. And there we have our knit stitch. Next is a purl, so I wanna move my yarn to the front. We're gonna go through our next loop on the left-hand side going from right to left. Your needle should end up in the front. Now we're gonna wrap our yarn around our front needle. Front first, back second. Now we're going to pull that through. We've worked that stitch, so go ahead and pull it off the left-hand needle. And there's your purl. So just repeat this all the way across, going back and forth between your knit stitch and your purl stitch. In between every stitch, just make sure you're moving your yarn back and front, depending on what stitch you're doing next. Okay, I just did my last stitch in the row, and for me that was a purl stitch. Here's what my first row looks like. To continue on to my next row, I'm going to switch my needles. 
So you always want your work to start in your left hand and you're gonna start with an empty needle on your right hand. Anytime you turn over your work with knit and purl stitches, the stitch that you did finish with is going to be the opposite of the stitch that you started with. So, like I said, I finished my row with a purl stitch. You can tell because it has this little bar across here. If you have a knit stitch, it will look like a loop, like this. So this has a little loop going around, and this has a bar across the top. So I finished with a purl. That means I'm going to start with a knit stitch because a purl is just a backwards knit and a knit is just a backwards purl. So once you've got your needles switched, get your yarn situated in your working hand and you can start on the next row. It's going to be pretty much exactly the same as the first row. We're gonna alternate in between knit and purl stitches going to do one knit, one purl, one knit, one purl, and the stitches are made in the same way. That row ended on a purl as well. Here's how my work is looking after two rows. You can start to see the rows kind of forming. So right here, this row, you can see the two knit stitches. There is two loops, yeah? And on this right next to it, you can see the two purls. See how there's two bars? I'm going to switch my needles and just continue working. One knit, one purl, repeat. If you're ever going along on your row and you forget what you're supposed to do next, all you need to do is look at the row underneath the rest of the stitch, right? So on this stitch, I'm wondering, am I supposed to do a knit or a purl? I lost track. I'm going to look at the stitch and look at all the stitches under it. What are these stitches here? These all have loops interlocking each other. So this is a knit stitch. I wanna continue doing my knit stitches on top of there. If I were on this stitch and I was wondering, uh, I'm lost, where, where do I go from here? Look at all of the stitches underneath this one. See these bars going across here? That means this is a row of pearls and on top of your purls, you just wanna continue with another purl stitch. So it's a good idea to just look at your work and try to keep track of what stitches you're doing because it is hard to go back and fix it later on. So I'm going to do a few more rows just to make this piece a little bit longer to show you a bigger representation of what the stitch looks like. And then we will show you how to cast off. Okay guys, so here is what my work is looking like after doing about 15 rows. The sides are very messy, but that's just how it is with knitting. 
Here is our rib stitch. The interesting thing about the rib stitch is that whenever you're looking at it, it almost hides the purl stitches completely until you start stretching it out. See how you can only really see the loops from all of the knit rows? You can only see the bars from the purl stitches whenever you stretch it out. And then you can see them in between here. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to cast off on your one by one ribbing. You're gonna want your work in your left hand, get your yarn situated, and then we are going to start working our stitches. We're gonna do a regular knit stitch in the first stitch. And then we're going to follow the pattern. So the next stitch in the row is a purl. So I'm going to do my purl stitch. And then I'm gonna go over to my right needle and I'm going to look at these loops. What I wanna do is I wanna take this loop, I wanna pull it over our second loop and off my needle completely, okay? So I'll take my needle in my left hand, I'm gonna grab my first loop, I'm gonna pull it over my second loop and off the needle. And then we are going to repeat. So I'm gonna do my next stitch, whatever it is in the pattern. So this one is a knit stitch, so I'll do a knit. And now I have two stitches on my right needle. So I'm gonna take the first one, I'm gonna pull it over, the second one and off of my needle. Okay, I'm gonna do my next stitch, which is a purl. Now I have two needles on the right side, so I'm gonna take the first one, pull it over the second one and off. And this is just gonna repeat all the way across. So next is a knit stitch, and then take this one off, purl stitch, Take this one off and keep going. Okay, there we go. Normally you would cut off this yarn and weave your ends in, but I am not gonna cut it off because I'm just gonna unravel this and use the yarn for something else. But here is your swatch. This is a really good stitch for brims of hats or the cuffs of your sleeves, the bottoms of your sweaters, the necklines, and that is because this stitch is very stretchy. It stretches a lot and it bounces back. So this was how to do a one by one rib. It is one by one because there's one row of knitting and one row of purl in between. If you need any refreshers on how to do any of the stitches that we talked about in this tutorial, such as the knit stitch, the purl stitch, or just a long tail cast on, you can watch my other two beginner knitting videos. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video was helpful to you in any way and I will see you guys next time. Bye.